May the blessings of new life and new anointings compass you about, heart dwellers. Well, I had some teeth removed, and today was the first time I could really talk with any clarity. So forgive my lapse in communication with you. It wasn't laziness this time, thanks be to God. On the way home from the dentist's office, Ezekiel and I were talking, and we'd been discussing the need to really enter into worship during creating music. And I came into prayer longing to know why this has become so difficult for us. I began, Lord, Ezekiel and I are both feeling this need to be so close to you, to speak our hearts to you, and to sing songs of our deepest love and adoration for you. Please speak to me. Please tell me how this will come about. For we have tried on our own power and nothing comes. Jesus began. It's all about relationship, my dove, as you recognize me more and more in the doings of your life, as you appreciate me more and more, as you see your unworthiness more and more, and how I amend you with my graces. As you do this, the music will come from a deeper place with more passion, Without gratitude and appreciation, nothing will come, because there's nothing to say. You are both lacking in stopping your flow of thoughts and focusing more simply, more purely, more steadily on what I have done that is before you, and in essence, who I am to you. This is one reason the enemy works so hard at condemnation, He wants the focus to be on yourselves, self-centered rather than on me. And you know, guys, I've noticed this time and time again. It's really true. He wants to turn our energy in on ourselves, scrutiny and fear and, oh my goodness, everything you can think of so that that huge reservoir of love coming from the Lord is dammed up by fear and scrupulosity. Anyway, he continues here. You are both lacking in stopping your flow of thoughts and focusing more simply, more purely, more steadily on what I have done that is before you and, in essence, who I am to you. This is one reason the enemy works so hard at condemnation. He wants the focus to be on you, self-centered, rather than on me. This is a mighty work not to be undertaken by the faint or half-hearted. It requires constant readjustment of thought and emotion. This is one reason why I exhort you to read and linger in the scriptures. They contain a more full description of me and how I feel about you. They reveal my character over and over again. To linger in the scriptures is to linger in me. But Lord, can't that make me legalistic? Depending on what you choose to focus on, yes. Yet if you go there seeking love, you will find it everywhere. Search out only one word or phrase or situation when it's quickened to you, when you ask Holy Spirit to open the Bible for you. Then read between the lines and linger there. Well, so I open the scriptures randomly, and it opened to Isaiah 49, which I relate to on so many different levels, I couldn't even begin to figure out which one was anointed, but he did show me. And it was verse 10, For he who pities them leads them beside springs of water. Jesus continued, And do we not sit beside springs of running water? Do we not play our flutes there and listen to the gentle flow? Have I not nurtured you with springs of life? And have you not been refreshed in my presence, O precious redeemed one? Yes, indeed, we have spent many, many hours by the running waters. And there I have nurtured you. And from these same waters come nourishment for our children. And here I want to share that my husband has a beautiful gift. 
It seems like every night when he tucks me in, if he's going to be staying up later than I am, every night he has a vision of Jesus and I together. And I enter into that vision very, very easily before I go to sleep. And for the past two nights, we've been sitting on a rock near a stream, playing our flutes together. So that's why he brought that particular vision up. He continued, So you see, my beloved, it is all about relationship and resting in me as I revive you with the waters of truth from heaven. These springs through osmosis enter into your entire being and flow out freely into the thirsty. It is not so much about what you gather or make. It is about position and receiving here in my arms beside springs of running water. This invisible nourishment revives, sustains, and overflows to those who are longing deeply for me. What is so mysterious about that? Do you not know that you are all vessels to be filled with divine refreshment for your fellows? You need not garner, collect, and labor as if all depended upon you. With just the touch from the hem of my garment, you are infused with knowledge and understanding. Yet it is good for you to read my heart and history with men, for there you will find many parallels in your own lives through which you can find more understanding. But when you have touched that hem, linger, for those words are surely anointed for you. Linger, and through that inspiration will come forth a sweet melody and nourishing words to comfort our children. Do you see, when you rest in me, as you did last night through so much pain, I bring an image to delight your soul. Yes, that image is so delightful to you, and together we share in that moment my divine delight in you and all of creation. From this place you have learned how I delight in delighting you, how much your happiness and comfort means to me. And yet there's a tale to tell about these flashing iridescent wings, freedom, new life coming forth from my very end. And here Jesus is telling me about the blue morpho butterfly I love so much. When I was at the height of miserable after having my teeth extracted, lying in bed, he was sitting beside me and he raised his right hand and a perfect blue butterfly landed on his index finger almost as if it had flown directly out of his heart for the express purpose of delighting and distracting me, which it did. And it flashed its exquisite wings a few times and flew away in newness of life. That is what I felt. Not only great beauty, but off on a new adventure in life as well, which he's been telling us all this is a season for that. I came to him this morning with these questions because I want music that comes from a deep and sincere place, not just music, but the cry of my heart that will pierce legalistic veils that separate our feelings from his. I know we cannot do this without the movement of his grace as we abide in the vine. Jesus continued, Yes, beloved, abiding is the secret but also gaining control of your mind in harmony with mine. I give you glimpses into my divine nature, my affections for you, my profound concern at all times. That is the hem of my garment. Rather than passing you, I'm deliberately coming to you, and I'm revealing my presence to you, for I'm always with you, but not always perceivable. I am coming to be with you perceivably, because I relish your company even more than you relish mine. And in this case, I relish your recognition of my presence, that our hearts may sing together in heavenly harmonies of joy and worship. So take this anointed word, this rhema word, dwell in it, 
and allow our love to be manifested in our music, for I have revealed many truths to you through it. Lord, you will help me. How can I not? he exclaimed with joy. 